really is in heaven. That's the best that's still to come. Yes, 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 yes. God is still writing your story. Yes, he is. And he wants you to come along with him. Because as a matter of fact, he's already written the story. He's revealing the story. He's revealing it, but he does reveal it through his son and a relationship with him and through the word of God. Amen. Amen. And then he goes on to say, the best part right here, the things which God has prepared for those that love him. Yes, yes. Do you love him? Yes, yes Lord. Do you know him? Yes. Do you believe him in your heart? Yes. yes. Have you confessed him with your mouth? Yes. yes. Then he has some things yet to reveal to you that you have not seen. Praise Amen. God. You have not heard. Yes, yes. And that you don't know about. Yes. And that's just not pie in the sky when you die. That's falling on the ground while you're around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we don't have to wait till we get to heaven to get to get God's glory and to celebrate God and to celebrate life yes. right now. So deliver me from the church is telling me I can't live. Because God, Christ died that we may have life and that we may have it more abundantly. And when God has says your abundance is yet to come. Amen, amen. It looks good right now. It feels good right now. We live in houses we did not build. We're driving cars. We don't even know how they drive. But yet God said, even that your mind can't understand yes, because right. there's more to come. That's right. Yes, yes. What's coming is God is going to let his kingdom come. Right here on earth. There's going to be a new earth and a new heaven. I can't wait. Yes, Lord. Because if this, this society is just like a rent. Yes. So Paul built the Savages Church right in the heart of the city of Corinth, which was a robust and a commercial, busy uh, city is right on the coast, so there was a lot of uh, water trading, and there's a lot of uh, uh, sin going on. Guess where? In the temple, mm. in the church. Yes, mm. yes, yes. Primary sin that was happening in Corinth, and that day was prostitute. They were called priestesses. Mm. Why? Because they hung out at the temple yes, yes. to be the Prostitutes for, the, temple, for the priests uh -huh. who made it that they would have no wives. God didn't tell them to do that. Yes. They did it on their own. But so you won't take a wife that's of the word, but you'll bring in prostitutes into God's house and fornicate. So this is Paul talking to this church that he built right there in the middle of all of that. So just imagine San Francisco, and then you'll get a good picture of the type of stuff that was going on in Corinth. Just like what's going on over in San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> Just to give you a comparison. I'm not hating on anybody that was born and raised in San Francisco, Kathy. I'm just trying to give a comparison. <laughs> but she'll tell me on the way back home, well, that first lady, you know I was born in San Francisco. Yeah, it's still a corrupt city. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you live in Vallejo now. You're out of here. Yeah. <laughs> well, just to give you an idea of the type of the city and what was going on in Corinth, the church was established and what they call Old Corinth and they had all this fornication and all this stuff going on and it was just corrupt with sin and Paul built a church right in the middle of that. God, right in the middle of that because God can do anything, anywhere if we let him. That's right. And so I imagine that Paul, when God told him to do that, God said, you want me to do what, where? <laughs> You want, build me a, you want me to build me a church? Where? But God, you said, God said, build me a church. Kind of like I did when I, God told me to build a church. I started talking back. I said, excuse me? Build me a church grounded and rooted in the truth of who Jesus Christ is. Established by God and guided by the Holy Spirit. I said, you want me to do what? <laughs> they don't even want women preaching. Lord, what you talking about? <laughs> God said, but if I need a church. It's grounded and rooted in me. The churches have put me out, yes. got far away from me. Yes. So when God says something to you and it don't make sense, that's confirmation that it's God yes. and not man speaking. Yes. That yes. you're hearing through spiritual eyes. Yes. So if you can make sense out of it with your finite mind, don't do it. Because it's not of God. Because right. what God tells us to do don't make any sense. Right. 
because the Bible said that so far as the earth is from the heaven is our thought from his thought. We can't know what he knows. We don't, it's a mystery. Yes. But through the spirit of God, we can believe it. And we can live it. He will reveal it in his time because the best that's yet to come is coming every day. Amen. He's moving in a mighty way. And he's moving in every day. And the things that God has prepared for those that love it. So there it goes back to salvation. He doesn't hate the sinner. He just doesn't like their lifestyle. Right. But God loves us. Yes. And he has, uh, he has a prepared thing for a prepared people. But we need to be in a position to receive what God has prepared for us. And then he's giving. Think about it like this. Y'all, anybody in here, me and um, I forget Kathy's best friend name. So me and Kath, Barbara, and Peggy, and Mr. Beasley, Pastor Clark, and maybe Mother Barbara, maybe Elder Williams. We remember the old reels. You remember the movie reels? They had two reels, and they would take the movie tape and put it around one reel and fold it on it so it would lock in, and then the movie would play as the tape was turned around. That's what it is. So God is playing a movie. Yes. Yeah. It's his movie. Yes. Yeah. That he started before the ages of time. Yeah. Yeah. And he reveals it to us, yeah. his mysteries, as the wisdom in us is able to receive it. Yeah. So there's so much more that's yet to come that we're not yet able to accept mm. yeah. or understand. So he reveals the movie to us slowly and small pieces. I'm glad y'all listen. Y'all all listen. So I don't care where you are right now in your life. I don't care what's going on. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how good it is. Even to you, the best is yet to come. There's more to your story. And God is still Revealing it. Yes, yes, yes. As the will turn. Yes. He's revealing. Yes. You're not too old. You're not too young. Yes, yes. Your story yes. is being revealed. Yes. Don't miss it. The only way you don't miss it is you got to know Jesus. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. You got to know Jesus. Because the last verse here said, but God has revealed things to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. And the spirit is given to us through our relationship with Jesus. Oops. If you don't know Jesus, nothing I said means makes any sense to you. If you don't believe, and this is even for those who say they're saved and then come to church forever and ever. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the virgin born, resur uh, crucified, resurrected son of God, you don't know Jesus. Amen. Mm. And God showed up right now and decided to call you home. And, he, and he, he, he stopped you at the pearly gate. And he said, why should I let you into my heaven? And you said, well, I went to church sometime, Lord. I was good. I treated everybody right. I gave down at the, at the, the mission. Yes, yes, yes. I helped the homeless. God said, depart from me. You work up iniquity. I know you're not. If you can't tell God that let me in because I believe that you sent your son, your only son, to die for me and I confess my sin and I invite him into my heart, then you don't know Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's, the only, that's it right there. It's not about showing up to church every day. It's not about preaching. It's not about singing. not about teaching. It's not about shouting. It's about knowing who Jesus is. And, and confessing that you are a sinner and that you're in need of what he did for you. Dying on the cross and shedding his precious blood. So that you could know him and pardon of your sin. And that you could begin an intimate relationship with him. So they can start to reveal his spiritual wisdom to you. So you could know what's yet to come. 
You know, if, if I were to look through earthly eyes, I'd say, God, you've been pretty good to me. I'm cool. You don't need to give me anything else. You don't need to do anything else for me. I don't need another house. I don't need another car. Like, way, 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 way too many clothes. Lord, you've been good to me. I'm, I'm, I'm good. But in the spirit, I know that there's something much better because I want to see Jesus when I die. I want to see mama and I want to see daddy. I want to see grandmama and granddaddy. And I want to see my nieces and my nephews and my grandbaby. I want to see all of them. But when I go home to be with the Lord, I want to see Jesus. So that's why I want to stay here. I want to stay in the movie. I want to see the best that's yet coming. I'm not going to tell y'all this because y'all might shoot me. Don't get happy at 2573 Clay Bay, Sweet Six. I'm just telling you. Don't get happy here. God is a God of His Word. There's so many people out there that need Jesus. There are so many people out there that need to come back to Jesus. And they need to see a church that's grounded and rooted in who Jesus Christ is, teaching the word of God and not preaching puffed up messages, but preaching Jesus, the one crucified, the one resurrected for ourselves, for us, for our Savior. That's what the world needs. So we need to get him. We need to understand him, and then we need to take him out to the world so those that are lost, those that are killing, stealing, things that all of them, they need Jesus. They don't need anything fancy. They don't need us to show out. They need Jesus. Because that's the best for them, too. They don't know it. So if there's one today that don't know Jesus, in the pardon of their sins. This is your time to come and say, I'm a sinner. I need the Lord to come into my heart and to save me. This is your time. Maybe you know Jesus. Maybe you are saved and you're outside. You don't have a church home. Then you're spiritually homeless. The world is too dark. It's too cold, too scary to be outside of the ark of safety. You need a family. Yes, Lord. They can pray for you. Yes. Take care of you. Yes. Be there for you when you're grieving. Yes. When your children are in trouble. Yes. You need a church home. Yes, Lord. You need to know the Lord through teaching. Yes. This is a teaching church. Yes. This is your time. Yes. This is your time. Put your hands together, brother, preacher, the word of God. Come on, Gilbert, you can do better than that. I think we're going on how many years? Fourteen. Fourteen years, and... I, do, I remember when I started and came in as senior pastor in 2013. It's been about nine to 10 years for me. We've been just laboring endlessly together. And I've, I've seen the ministry when we was just at two, two, one to two members. And I've seen it over the years gradually grow and grow. And you know what? I can't take credit. The wife can't take any credit. Because God is in the growing business. Yes, yes, yes. It's in him we live, move, and have our being. So if we're going to rejoice, if we're going to worship, don't worship. And thank God because of Pastor, Executive Pastor Shirley Clark. Don't rejoice because of Senior Pastor Dr. Richard Clark. We, we're just instruments here. And we can't take any credit for what God is doing. We just want to remain faithful. So I don't want to bring your attention to this person. I want to bring your person, your attention to that person. Because he's the one that makes the ultimate decision on whatever we do, where we go, whatever words we speak. It's in him we live and move and have our being. On first Sunday, which is just this past Sunday, 
I talked about who is on the Lord's side out of Exodus, the 32nd chapter. Mm -hmm. This Sunday, my wife brought a text and he, she, she said the best is yet to come out of 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. Well, can I just give you a snapshot on third Sunday what the Lord gave me as I sat there? He said, this is the message for third Sunday. So if you come on third Sunday, which is coming up, this is the message he gave to me. And, and I had to write it down because he was just, she was preaching and God was dumping into me. Mm -hmm. Next Sunday is going to be, um, so first Sunday, whoever on the Lord's side, this Sunday, the best is yet to come. So third Sunday is, is this, get ready to move. Hello. He just gave it to me, get ready to move. And it's gonna come from Genesis, the 12th chapter, verses one through three. So you have all week to read that entire 12th chapter, but I wanna focus on when he told Abraham, get thee out and go to a place that I will show you. That's it, that's it. I just wanna know, are you ready to travel church? Yeah. Are you ready to move church? Yeah. I'm telling you every time, that this lady right here and I are like in a race. We're running track for the Lord. And there is a goal that we see. And I'm telling you, and I say this every Sunday because the Lord is making this visible. I hope that you're ready to run with us. We don't want to run alone. And we don't want to run and look behind. Where are our members? We want you to keep us pace with us. Yes, How many of you that are members of the temple are ready to run and keep up pace. Look at them hands. To God be the glory. Let us stand. I just want to remind you that we have been giving tasks on Saturday. And if you have given assignments that during this transition, God said, whatever you do, do a decent and in order. Many of you have been given tasks and assignments. And I'm praying if we have a project manager and Sister Val, raise your hand. She, Valerie, she's making everything happen and my wife, the lead of the project. And it's like a well-oiled machine. Things are flowing. If you have an assignment, please don't wait the day of to start working your assignment. Start right now. Start right now. I want you to process what you've been given and take a note of it. And I want you to manage it and effectively work it. And if you have any question, you have Valerie's phone number. Give her a call. Don't call me, don't call the wife, because we don't know. We know, but we ain't gonna say. Call the project manager. Amen. Please manage your work. Look at it today as if it was only yesterday and see what you need to do and start working it now. How many is going to start working it now? How many is going to start working the project now? Let me see your hand. How many have been given assignments? I see your hand, Deacon. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand. We just want to work it and pray about it and let God bless it. Father, we just thank you for this word of God from the woman of God. And I'm praying that you refresh her spirit right now. Minister Beasley, put your arm around that woman of God. Refresh her right now from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Give her spiritual renewal. Give her spiritual restoration. Give her physical strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, restore her strength again. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, that every heart say, Amen. The wife and I will be at the door, and we just want to let you know how much we love and appreciate you.